with a draw or a win against Manchester United. Solskjaer's United, we will get through to the final of the League Cup. Hello there folks and welcome to part 10 of Season 2 of our Football Manager 2020 save with Liverpool. And today it is time, as I have just alluded to, for the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. Now, we went and beat Manchester United away from home at Old Trafford by one goal to nil, courtesy of a Joel Matip goal. It was a very tight game, and you ought to go and watch it if you haven't done already in the previous episode. But today, it is time um, for the second leg. I don't think that Rashford is out of this one, because you will remember that Marcus Rashford um, was injured, but I believe Rashford, I mean, he's, uh, to be fair, he is injured. He's uh, only 76% conditioned, so we do get away with that. And looking at the tactics at the moment... Um, he's not on the bench or anything, but uh, still looks a squad, strong squad for Manchester United. A few players not in the best condition. Sanchez on the transfer list for nothing. Wh what? Um, his contract runs out at the end of next year. He's on the transfer list for absolutely nothing. And nobody wants him. There must be some sort of thing going on there. That seems very... I mean, he's not a man I want, particularly because of his... Uh, because of his um, wage obligations and the fact that he's 32 years of age, but... Wow. 32. World-class player. Man United on a penny for him. Not the best sign in the world, eh? Um, but in terms of our schedule, as I've just shown you, we did beat Manchester United 1-0 in the first round. Um, the first leg of this, beg your pardon. We did beat Chelsea in the previous round and Millwall uh, and Leeds United to get to this stage. But in terms of all the other competition we've been taking part in ever since that Chelsea game, um, we haven't had the best run, really. We did draw against Leicester. Our first drop points is the Watford game. And to be fair, Leicester came back into it twice. Uh, Baba Rahman and both Chenny's Pratt um, were injured in that match. A little bit of a shame for them, although it wasn't intentional from us. We took an early lead. Uh, Vardy capitalised 54 minutes in. With 15 minutes to go, we thought we had the game wrapped up. Um, but new Leicester signing Michi Batshuayi went and scored a goal. Made it two each. And as hard as we tried, it was only really Salah who turned up. It has to be said. Um, nobody else turned up massively. Burge played decently as well as the defence. In terms of our attacking options, Mane and Bobby Firmino had a... Had an off day and really with 20 minutes to go, Shakiri and Balotelli. Couldn't do too much about it. We went, then went and beat uh, Brighton by two goals. Now with another goal for Milner and another goal for Oxide Chapman. The two of those playing really well at the moment. And particularly James Milner, you know. I mean, he's 35 years of age. He's uh, 36 next year. <laughs> and, and the only thing that's going to kill him off is a big injury. I mean, if you look at that, in all competitions, his average rating is 7.25. That is uh, certainly not bad. 7.9 in the Champions League. Uh, 7.22 in the Prem, not so good in the FL Cup, FIFA Club World Cup is a bit irrelevant, but FA Cup very well, which all of these appearances all tally up to 7.25 average rating, um, and I'm sure Oxide Chowdhury looks in pretty similar form as well, 7.18, uh, been niggled with a few little injuries over the season, but he's been pretty consistent in all competitions, his FIFA Club World Cup was pretty good as well, so we're... Uh, our two main midfielders at the moment, and they were both scoring goals. Didn't need the front three on that day, which on that day was Salah, Lainez and uh, Bobby Firmino. We didn't need them. And then we went away to Bristol City, and admittedly we did play a weakened side. We did play Reese Williams. He got his first uh, appearance as a central defender for us. And uh, you could tell by the amount of times he got turned over uh, by the Bristol attackers that he just isn't good enough just yet. So a bit of a, um, a, a misinterpretation and misconception really on my side on how good he was. Um, but we played a pretty much full-strength squad. We played the two new strikers, technically, Milik and Balotelli. Balotelli did get a goal, but Milik was just completely off his game, didn't play too well. And Bristol played us off the park, to be quite honest. We really underestimated their ability. 27 shots for them. It's a wonder that we didn't go and lose that game, but uh, thank goodness for a late goal from Balotelli, and we made it one each. And uh, we have got that replay later on today. We won't be playing that on camera. Um, I don't know what to do, actually. I know we're going to play this Manchester United game, but I don't know if to play the Baggies game. Um, or play those three games off camera and play Sarsen. I haven't decided just yet. Um, but after those two games in the Premier League, um, things look very good for ourselves and City. Um, we're tied on points and would be with this game in hand we've got with Manchester United. And we are technically two points clear at the top of the Premier League. But it is so close. Everton have lost a little bit of ground. But even so, of course, if ourselves, Man City and Everton go and win our games in hand there will still be four points between the top five with 15 games to go. And that is just crazy. Really is crazy. Um, and any of those five win the league. And, and Tottenham are still down in 15th. And still haven't sacked Kloppy yet. So there you go. Um, but let's have a look at the team, shall we, to play against um, Manchester United in this home match. As uh, I haven't alluded to, I will say um, that we only need a draw here. We don't need to win. We beat Manchester United 1-0 away from home. I didn't know the away goals rule, how that stood. So I might have to look at that potentially if we get into such situation. But if we're playing good clean sheet uh, form like we have done 
in most of the games this year, we should be okay. And pretty similar squad, I think, to the one that played against us in the first leg. Mason Greenwood's got no face, because we are using actually an uh, FM19 face pack, which is a little bit of a shame. But we're going to taste the lads. Uh, we're going to be assertive. I like this one. We cannot allow complacency to undo all the good work you've done in your first leg. Go out there and treat this as if you are starting from scratch. And I think the players um, like that idea. And uh, really, against a team like Man United, I always say this, and it's a bit of a cliche, but if you're not motivated against a team like United... You're never going to be motivated in any sort of match. So we're going to have to see how we get on against United. It's an interesting one. It'll book us a slot in the EFL Cup final against, you probably guessed it, Man City. A team that, to be fair to us, we've had a very good record against. So it's going to be a, a derby of sorts in the final. It's either going to be a Manchester derby um, or a Liverpool-Man City derby. But it'd be great to go and win the EFL Cup. I haven't done that so far this save. And uh, it'd be great to go and do that to add to our... Um, Good list of honours so far. Two FIFA Club World Cups, the Champions League, um, not the Premier League, unfortunately, yet. The Community Shield, two uh, Super Cups. And I think that's it. I think we've won five trophies. Two Super Cups, um, two Club World Cups, and the Champions League. I think that's all we've won. Yeah, that's all we could win. Uh, but sure of a ball in, and uh, it seems Manchester United aren't playing too badly at the start here. But a good uh, dis uh, dis dispossession. Dispossession. Oh, I he dispossessed somebody, did mine. I mean, mine. My English is shocking today. It really is. I recorded a video earlier and I was thinking, is it that word? Is it that word? You'll have to excuse me. Um, but Van Dyke picks up another yellow card. Um, not too fussed about that in this sort of game, to be honest. Two of their games, two of their players picked up yellow cards. It's always going to happen in a game like this, particularly with the atmosphere here at Anfield. But we are playing well so far. Doesn't have to be the most fancy of games. I understand it'd be great if it was um, for you guys watching. But it doesn't have to be the most fancy of games in the world as long as we go... Uh, not lose. We should be absolutely fine. Great ball from Milner through to Firmino. And Firmino could open the scoring just so narrowly wide. Beats De Gea. Um, but can't quite beat. Well, he does beat the post. And Milner with a very good ball there. And uh, as you can see, both of those midfielders doing particularly well. Good ball from Milner into Firmino again. Uh, back out to Chamberlain. Can we do anything with this? To Laporte, who is making an appearance now. I actually didn't talk through our starting 11, did I? Um, it's, it's a pretty normal starting 11. I, I completely just forgot to do that. Chamberlain's got some room. This could be a chance. Ball into Mo Salah. It is a goal, but I'm going to say that one is going to be offside, I would guess. Let's check, but it looks like it's got all of those traits of being one of the VAR offside goals, and uh, it is. Maguire gets the yellow card for uh, a tackle on the edge of half-time. Is this going to be a potential chance for Mo Salah? Let's have a look. He lines up the free kick, has the shot, and he's just wide, just narrowly wide again, much like the Firmino one. Um, so we are doing very well here, and we're very close. We're going to tell the lads... Um, Yes, we're still leading the aggregate. Make sure that is still the case at full time. There's some nice new uh, new team talks for this year for, for semi-finals and finals, which is really nice. And uh, it makes it a little bit more relevant to the game, I feel. And particularly that one at the start of the game is something I'd definitely say in real life. Well, it really rings true. And uh, that one is the same, I suppose. Make sure you're still leading the aggregate at, at the full-time whistle. And ultimately, um, we aren't doing too badly at the moment. I, I completely acknowledge that a Manchester United goal... Would pull it all in tatters. We're going to demand a bit more from the lads. It would be great to go and win this game as well. But we're already 73 minutes in. It's been a pretty dull game. So we are going to bring Alexander Arnold on for Joe Gomez. He seemed a little bit tired. And we're going to bring Naby Cater on for James Milner. A player who hasn't had much of a chance. But if he wants to prove himself. A game like this is one of those days where proving yourself wouldn't be a bad thing to do. But Man United only with five shots so far. Quite staggering really. 15 minutes to go. Still no goals here. Martial has a chance. Still has a chance, but hits the side net. We haven't lost to Anfield as well since that game against Bournemouth. So this would be uh, a pretty big one if we went and lost. And uh, the free man, the £0 man, Sanchez is on the pitch. Let's see what he can do. With nine minutes to go, we could have an attacking chance here. We've still got one subs to make, um, which could be important if Manchester United go and score a goal now. That's why I'm holding off a little bit. Bit of a risk, of course, because we want the full fitness players on the, on the uh, pitch to try and prevent the risk of any sort of issue, but I think Mason Greenwood knew he would be offside there, hence why he halted his run, but we've just over eight minutes to go, we've had 19 shots so far, United have had six, a little bit of a silly uh, ball from Allison. but luckily it does reach most, a lovely ball into Mane, Mane's one on one with De Gea, all he has to do is put it into the back of that, which is exactly what he does, and I believe that is all over now, Man United have to go and score two in the next eight minutes, it's very possible and, of course, if they go and score two away goals, I do believe they'll be through on the away goals rule. But I moaned at uh, Alisson's reluctance to play that ball. But it seemed like a very good one. Very good control from Sadio Mane. That's his 15th goal of the season. And uh, we only need one goal. And that, I think, is exactly what we're going to get here. We are going to make that substitution. 
just to keep things fresh. It isn't going to hurt. We're going to bring Origi on for the last few minutes for the goal scorer, Sadio Mane. And uh, it looks like, ladies and gents, we have an EFL Cup final to look forward to, although Manchester United aren't uh, all done yet. The former City player, Laporte, running out. Look at Laporte. Go. Brilliant ball to Salah. Can we really finish this off and make it 2-0? 3-0 aggregate, but Salah is dispossessed by Harry Maguire. Jesse Lingard on the ball. But that is going to be all she wrote, I think, that De Gea puts it out. They are desperate now. Laporte actually beaten by Mason Greenwood. Van Dijk trying to get this. Sanchez, can he do anything? Can they get one goal back for a bit of parity here? Just in this one leg. But Van Dijk puts it out temporarily. Martial into the box. Alexander Arnold clears the danger. We have another chance here, potentially. A good ball from Alexander Arnold through to Salah. Can Salah get it into the box? Let's have a look. Salah dispossessed by uh, Maguire's good challenge. But looks like it's going to be all she wrote. This just looks like the tit tittle tattle which you get at the end of a match. A beautiful uh, bit of pressure from Bobby Firmino. And surely that's got to be that's got to be it now. That has to be it. One of the most dull games possible. A little bit like the first leg was, I suppose. But uh, it looks like it is going to be all over. I mean, I've said that about four times now. Making a hint of the game. Just finish it. And finally, it was all over. We 24 shots. We beat Man United again. The top team of the league. And uh, two big... Two big milestones, really, though. We've reached 100 games in management, and we are now unbeaten in 26 matches in all competitions. That is... Uh, that's pretty special. And uh, I know it's only the EFL Cup. You could moan it's only the EFL Cup, but we've still got to get here. We've beaten Man United and Chelsea. Big names to get here. And uh, at the end of Feb, we're going to be playing against Man City in the final. So that is absolutely fantastic. We've booked our Wembley place, and uh, that is something I'm absolutely chuffed with. I still can't make a decision what to do here. How far are we into the video? Could we have a go against West Brom? Or maybe against Arsenal? We are going to play against West Brom, I think. Um, yeah, let's go and play against West Brom. It's two games in a row. It's the end of January, and let's see how we get on. Fingers crossed, another three points in the league. But West Brom, it's the sort of game, particularly in the poor weather, you simply never know. You know some years you're just destined to win. Look at those results. Club legend Gerard. I mean, we're not even talking about City yet. Gerard, who's now manager of Norwich, has pulled an absolute blinder. Gone and beat Manchester United, and again, um, he came in at that point. I mean, he lost to us 5-0. And then he all of a sudden thought, right, we need to get on with this. Two draws against Bournemouth, a win against Man United, okay, two losses, fair enough. And then three out of three, a win against Man United again. And then up to 15th in the Premier League, ahead of Tottenham. I mean, okay, Tottenham got two games in hand on them, but... Tottenham again, losing against Wolves, a bashing 3-0. And in 16th in the league, Klopp's still there. I mean, I suppose with those two games now, if they win, they go up to 12th. But 13 points at, at, at least away from the continental zone of Europa League. And then, of course, this. I mean, City drew again. City dropped points again. If it is going to be our year... This is the best chance possible. Drop points for City. A loss for United. Two of their four losses now have come against Norwich. Lost against Southampton as well and then against us. But uh, this has got to be our year. We go with, I mean, Everton are top of the table. That just, that just sums it all up. It sums up all you need to know. Um, we win today. We go top of the table. So this game is going to be a lot more important than I thought it would be. Um, and then if we go and win, of course, the next match... We'll be two points clear at least on City, will we? Yes. And uh, potentially four points clear of Everton and five clear of Man United. It's got to be our year this year. And and we've still got to play City again. We've still got to play City. We've got to play Everton. We've still got to play Everton. Still got to play Man United. Those two games will decide the league this year. Man United and Everton. I really think they will. And if we can push on between now and then, I genuinely think... They will decide the league. And I think we could win it at the Everton game. If we are going to be optimistic. And given the run of form we've had. Ever since losing to Chelsea. I mean that was back in the start of October. Um, not losing a single match since then. Being unbeaten in 26. Putting into some outstanding performances against some of the best. I just wonder perhaps that playing in four competitions. I mean look at the EFL Cup will be over fairly soon. Is playing in four competitions going to hurt? I don't know. But we're playing against West Brom. Let's focus on the short term. Oh dear, Lallana's injured at uh, Hertha Berlin. And admittedly, I haven't even picked the squad yet. Because I was just so staggered at that screen. I was like, what? Really? That happened? Yeah. 
Um, so we're going to make some rotation. We're going to put Balotelli in for uh, for the man himself, Bobby Firmino. I'm just trying to ease Milik into the squad. And it is tricky mid-season, I always think, if you sign a player in January to do so. Um, Shakir is a little bit down in the dumps. We are going to put him back on the bench um, in place of uh, Arigi. Kate is going to come off the bench. Uh, is he? No, we're going to keep him on the bench. Probably the best, stop, stop, yeah, best option that can be there. We're going to bring Trent back into the side. Um, to be fair, Laporte played pretty well in that game. So he can keep his place alongside Joel Matip. Um, we're going to give Itter a chance because Itter played well um, in his gas game as well as Robertson being a little bit uh, knackered. Uh, apart from that though, I think we're going to keep the wingers the same. Shakiri's on the bench. I'm happy with that. So let's get into this match against West Brom, which I never thought would be as important as this. If we can get to the top of the Prem, it could be a big match in terms of momentum really. We had this chance um, with a Leicester match where United also dropped points and we dropped points. But today, it's one of those... You just can't drop points. This is really one of those where win and we are really in the driving seat. I mean, 20th in the Premier League form time. We could not be playing the. We could not be playing a better team. Um, but sometimes that complacency creeps in, doesn't it? You get a bit. You get a little bit complacent. And I don't think I'm guilty of that. I'm saying the players are guilty of that. Okay, I was saying about long term, we can maybe win the Premier League with a few matches to go. We're not even top of the Premier League yet. But apart from that statement. Um, I'm staying quite grounded, I would say. If we go and bash West Brom 5 or 6 here, I might not be so grounded. But anyway, 8 minutes in, Mane cuts inside, beats the defenders, but Milner on the edge of the box. Oh, 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 Jimmy Milner. We get top of the Premier League, and look at that. Liverpool and Everton, 1 and 2. Absolutely unbeatable. I mean, a, a good assist from Sadio Mane, who did all the work, really. Got past the defenders, had a go himself. He's been marvellous this year. But... Uh, I think if we look at 35-year-olds in the Premier League, I don't think there's too many of them playing better than James. In fact, 35-year-olds in the world. I'm just going to check he's 35 so it doesn't look stupid now. Yes, if we look at 35-year-olds in the world, I don't. I, I would challenge you. You can have access to the save if you want. I would challenge you to try and find a better one than James Milner at the moment. Unbelievable. Great goal from Milner. And we are off. To a start, of course, against one of his old rivals. He played for the Villa, didn't he? So one of his old rivals would be West Brom. And that's a real uh, bad ball from the defender back to the keeper there. But, but good pressure being put on by Mario Balotelli all the time. Don't really know what Salah did there. He really did nod the ball on. But he does try to win the ball back in all fairness. Good work rate from him. And ab out absolutely outstanding from our lads. I think that knowing that we could top the Premier League um, is a big boost for our lads. And Oh, that's unbelievable. We don't make it 2-0. But Sadio Mane does within 15 minutes. We are 2 0 up here against West Brom. And as I've said before, this is a massive opportunity. Huge. We're playing so well at the moment, particularly against this team. The only match where we didn't play well was when we made silly ch uh, choices against uh, Bristol City. But apart from that, we are playing brilliantly at the moment. And uh, we're keeping, keeping clean sheets, which is important. We've nearly got the best goal difference in the league, which is something on FM I've never been able to do. We've always been so bad defensively but we've got a really good defense here and uh, the attack's brilliant as well the two wingers have been outstanding James Milner real catalyst I mean I know he's good in real life but goodness me he's been even better um, in game but West Brom look completely disheartened it has to say it has to be said here and uh, we lead by two goals to nil at half time we're going to tell them not to be complacent because it's all right leading two nil at half time could be three two at uh, full time is that James Bond on the bench to clarify, I knew it was John Jonathan Bond. I was just trying to make a joke. But, uh, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. 15 shots for us. I mean, only two of them on target. I mean, I suppose you can say it's a 100% it's a shot on target with conversion. Oh, here we go. Here comes Wood, but a solid save from Allison. And when Adrian's played, Adrian's obviously played in all the cup competitions so far this year. Allison not had an injury like he did last year. Um, but when playing in the cup competitions, Adrian's been solid as well at the age of 32, I think. It might be 34. I think he's 32, though. Um, a very good ball from Matip. Lovely run from him from centre-back all the way through to Salah. Back across the box. Ita can't quite get there because the ball doesn't quite go that far. And um, West Brom do have a bit of a chance here, courtesy of it. It's Matt Phillips, it's got to be, who's still playing for them. Uh, yeah, that's Matt, Matt Phillips. God, he seems to be around for years on end. Phillips into the box. Good clearance from Laporte. Can Balotelli get there? Their players don't look interested whatsoever. Can Balotelli... He's, he's on a decent run when he's been playing, actually, at the moment. And he is on a decent run at the moment. Good ball into Salah. Rob Holding, that's got to be Rob Holding, goodness me. Gets it out, and Milner very nearly with a second goal of the game. Oh, he's a madman, he really is. That Rob Holding for playing for them, wow. Let's have a look at this a second. 
Bloody hell. So how much did he leave there for? Nine and a half. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's try and avoid injuries, I'd say, now. Let's bring Fabinho off. He looks a bit tired for Sander Burge. Um, we're also going to... It's about keeping Balotelli happy as well. Basically, I'm not going to bring both Shakiri and Milik on. I'm either going to bring Shakiri on for Salah or give Milik 20 minutes. Tricky decision, because Shakiri's a bit down in the dumps about his injury, and I think coming back would be good for him there. And I think, to be fair, we've got Bristol next week, and I think that would be a good opportunity for Milik to play a full match by himself without Balotelli up front, um, to see how he gets on. So that's what we're going to do. Balotelli's going to start unless he gets injured, of course. But it's 2-0 to us. We're going to demand a bit more out of the lads, because I think that more goals can't hurt anything. Lovely ball into the box for Ita! <laughs> Every man and his dog in this team can score. And he scored his first ever Liverpool goal with that peach. I said he'd played that when he gave him given a chance. I didn't mean scoring goals. Goodness me. The two fullbacks can blind. I mean, we were talking about the wingers earlier. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I am pumped. Because if the... If the la I know it's only against West Brom. But if the lads keep playing like they are here, we've got to go and win the title. We've got to be massively disappointed if we didn't go and win it from here. We'll bring Naby Keita on for the last few minutes in place of oxlade Chamberlain. But it has been comfortable since the start. Much like the game against Manchester United. Another clean sheet, a 3-0 win. And uh, an absolutely fantastic match. We are, we are really, 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 really in the driving seat now, in my opinion. And we, we just can't let that slip. We really can't let that slip. Top of the table for the first time, I think, all season, or potentially since uh, the second game. Yeah, it is. Look at that. First time since match day two against Arsenal. I appreciate I am covering up all those results, by the way. Um, but we dropped to as low as 12th, then to, I mean, match day 15. We dropped to 7th after a draw with uh, Man City. But ever since then, we've been on the up. Ever since that whacking against uh, Norwich 18 days later, to be fair, I suppose that was because of... Uh, Games in hand. But Manchester United had a fall from grace. Has to be... Oh, whoopsie daisy. Uh, Man United were really the team in form. I mean, they drew with Burnley. I mean, they, they lost to us 2-1. That was when they really dropped down. Goodness me. It just showed how close it was then. And uh, after... I mean, beating Fulham 4-0. Amazing they dropped to second. Um, Everton have been up there. They've been... Uh, they were actually top after beating us early on in the year. And are still second. City um, have been top for a while. So there have been... I think five clubs on top. Don't think Arsenal have been on top. Anybody else been on top throughout the year? Yes, Chelsea have been on top at one point. Bournemouth, not quite. The Heights are fifth, but they're very steady in seventh. But uh, Tottenham, I mean, no higher than twelfth. That was on match day one. How are you still in a job, Jurgen Klopp? I have absolutely no idea. But we'll be back on Saturday with uh, the next episode, which isn't going to be Arsenal because there is a much bigger match. The AFL Cup final and the first leg of our Champions League knockout round. So we're going to play four Premier League games between, between now and then. Um, in the episode after that, it's going to be a simple uh, re reverse of the fixtures because ultimately that's a massive game. City in the league. So it's going to be six Premier League games until we see um, any Premier League action next. will be nine games to go. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. We've got, with our game in hand, as I've said before, um, we'll go at least two points clear. I mean, it would be nice thinking if we're playing as well as we are, um, if we can get at least three points clear by the time we play City. The only match I can really see being a problem is that match against Arsenal. West Ham are a decent force away. There's no easy games in the Premier League, but if we are going to go and win the title, um, these four games, again, a match against West Ham. And come on, Jezza, be nice to us. Uh, don't, don't do what you did to Manchester United, but... Uh, it's really interesting to the season, isn't it? I know I'm saying the end of the season, but it always very quickly approaches. And uh, one episode today into the Carabao Cup final, top of the table. Not too shabby, is it? But if you enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below, comment your thoughts as well on the save, and subscribe for regular FM20 content. I'll be back over the weekend with two episodes showing those Porto and City matches, albeit either side of each other on the two episodes. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys on the weekend. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now.